This wrinkly, watery, fatty and squishy organ is your brain and it is filled with different sections that are in charge of specific jobs. These parts of the brain tell you to eat, sleep, dance, speak and carry out the most basic of everyday tasks. The cerebrum is the largest part of your brain. This area of your brain is responsible for higher functions like thinking, learning and memory. The cerebrum also interprets and processes the information obtained from your five senses. The hypothalamus plays a role in controlling behaviours such as hunger, thirst and sleep. It also regulates your body temperature, emotions and blood pressure. The pituitary gland secretes hormones that control your development. It promotes bone, muscle growth and controls stress responses. The cerebellum is where your motor skills such as balance and coordination are controlled. And finally, we have the medulla oblongata, which helps regulate your breathing, heart and blood vessel function, and digestion. We've teamed up with neuroscientists at the SFI Research Centre for Medical Devices to learn about the effects of exercise on your brain. We are meeting with Dr. Una Fitzgerald, who will help us unravel the mysteries of the brain. Our research group is developing new ways to treat diseases in your brain, such as multiple sclerosis and Parkinson's disease. Currently, we're working with universities and companies all over Europe involved in the EU-funded Brain Mat Train project. So the Brain Mat Train project is an EU-funded project that is focusing on finding a new biomaterial-based um, solution to Parkinson's disease. Wow, great to know that there are research teams in Ireland and all over Europe finding ways to improve our brain health. Let's see if Dr. Fitzgerald can explain how our brain sends messages and instructions to other parts of the body? Um, well, neurons are a specialised kind of nerve cell and of course these are the most important thing in the context of Parkinson's because it is a particular kind of neuron that's being lost as a result of the disease. Your brain is like a supercomputer, constantly collecting data, storing it in your brain, remembering it and then sending out the information it has gathered to your body. It spreads these messages to your body using neurons. Neurons are special nerve cells in your brain and throughout your body that send and receive information. A human brain has billions of neurons, but this number can change based on how your brain is stimulated. For a message to be sent from one neuron to another, it has to cross a microscopic gap called a synapse. Over time, repeated stimuli create highways of synaptic connections called neural pathways. Neural pathways would be strengthened and changed by repeating the particular activity that's being done. So the more you do the activity, the stronger the signal is. The neural pathways are changed if you're learning something new. You know, equally, if you stop doing that particular thing, you'll sort of lose that signal and it will become weaker. So that's why if you are doing a kind of a sporting activity, the more you do it, the better you are going to be at doing it. And that's because you're training your muscles to respond to the signals that are coming from the brain. So. The more you challenge your mind, the more your brain will develop these synaptic connections. Simple enough. But how do messages jump across the gaps between the neurons? That sounds like the perfect question for Dr. Jill McMahon, another neuroscientist at the National University of Ireland, Galway. Messages are transmitted between neurons um, via the medium of molecules called neurotransmitters. These are chemical messengers and they pass from one neuron to another where the neuron will throw the neurotransmitter across to another neuron, across what's, uh, this little gap between the neurons is called the synapse. And from the second neuron, messages can be transferred onto another neuron and right down through the nerves to every single part of the body. Parkinson's disease occurs whenever the levels of dopamine in the body drop. Dopamine is a neurotransmitter, it's produced by neurons and when these neurons die, the levels of dopamine in the body drop dramatically. Dopamine controls movement, so whenever the dopamine levels go down, people have difficulty controlling their movements, so they might have um, shaking or tremors. Drop in dopamine can also um, result in some effects in mood and emotions. So we are trying to create a, a material, in particular is a biomaterial, and the idea is to use this biomaterial to treat uh, the symptoms of Parkinson's disease. As biomaterial, we're using collagen. So the collagen is in liquid form, and when it's injected in the brain, becomes uh, a gel. So we are putting uh, neurons and cells inside the gel, and these cells will produce dopamine. 
and uh, the gel kind of protects these cells, so they al it allows these cells to release dopamine for longer and uh, to actually improving the symptoms of uh, Parkinson's disease. Dancing is probably one of the best exercises for maintaining good brain health. Um, whenever we dance, we use, integrate and use all different parts of the brain. We're listening, we're controlling our muscles, we're using different muscles at the same time, which we wouldn't have done before. Um, and this will set up new neural pathways. Um, whenever you've got lots of new neural pathways, you're increasing the complexity of the brain and it's thought actually that if you've got a more complex brain neural network, um, your brain will stay healthier and for longer. If you don't like dancing, you can challenge your brain with unfamiliar exercise techniques instead. These also stimulate your brain to form new neural pathways. For example, try kicking a ball with your less dominant foot. or swinging a racket or hurl with your less dominant hand. Now that you know how your brain works, make sure you keep challenging it with exercise to build those neural connections. It's a no-brainer.